السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. هذا الفيديو معنا. من واقع شو؟ I'm gonna make this video. Again, a lot of questions that people were asking or asking me about how to make hijra in Mauritania, stuff like that, and how to how to come here to study. People don't know how. People from the West, a lot of guys from. In fact, people from Egypt as well, which is crazy. There's a lot of magic going on in Egypt right now. So, in terms of Hijra, Hijra here is actually, I would say maybe it's like a perfect spot. Maybe not perfect, but it's very good. Meaning like, if someone wants to make Hijra here with their family, or even if they're just by themselves right now, it's a good place because one, you can get, you can get knowledge. You can get knowledge, you can study here. And you can go follow your studies as well. There's Olam out here that can teach you very well. You can go to the village or you can, or you can be in the city. So you can study. It has good deen. But generally, there's, the country is, is safe as well. And people are on deen. The masajid are always full for every salawat. It's not just like Ramadan for for some countries. I know in the West, the masjid is mainly full in Ramadan. You mainly feel Islam early in Ramadan. Yeah, it's not like that. I know some Muslim countries, countries, it's like that as well. But this country is not a feeling all around all year. It's very good. Also, what else? So yeah, the dean is good. Studying is good. Also, the the adab of the people, the, the people, the behavior of the people is they're very humble. People. They're very good. Mashallah, um, they will take care of you. You know, they're very hospi hospitable. Hospitable, you know what I'm trying to say. You know, they can take care of you well. They care about you, they care about your health, and especially if you're a new person. I've experienced, I've been here for the past like maybe two years now. And mashallah, man, these people, they're good people. They care about, especially if you're a student, they take care of you even more. Just knowing that you left your country, especially if you left the West to come study, they make sure they take care of you. Oh, you're, you're a student, mashallah. They're telling you thank you for coming to the country. So it's, it's good, man. So the people, uh, they make you feel welcome. They take care of you. They make things easy for you to get settled. In terms of getting like a citizenship, you can get like a, they give out temporary, like a, a farm, like a residency cards for like a year. So you can get that for one year. You have to renew it every single year. Um, you pay a certain amount in the year. It's not too hard to get. You can get it in like a month. You start the process. And in like a month, a month and a half, they'll give you the, the card, the official card. And with that, you, will have, you won't have any issues with the police. You can go anywhere you want. You can travel. Because when you travel from certain areas, for example, if you travel from the village to the city, or from the city to the village, like somewhere far, you go far distance, they will be a, there's police checkpoints. And if you don't have the the, the karma, the residency card, you know, you may you may have to uh, you may have to bribe someone, sometimes they ask for a bribe, you know, I don't understand. But sometimes you may have to you may get in trouble, they're like, why do you have a, a visa card? Like I've been, I've been in trouble as well. I was travelling at night. I know it's not you shouldn't really do that. I was travelling at night and I knew that I shouldn't be travelling because I'm gonna get stopped. Definitely at this time of the night, it was maybe like it was after Isha, like 9, 10 o'clock. I knew I was gonna get stopped. And then we got stopped. Everybody else had their cards, they were fine. I didn't, you know, along the line, best what happened after that, but Alhamdulillah, I got away. And they will give you problems if you don't have the card. You can't really do much. You know, um, some things become more expensive if you don't have the card. So they would, you know, because they are, this person doesn't have the residency card, they will just you stop the price right because they know this thing you shouldn't get it unless you have a card anyway but they'll give it to you but only with the price being extremely high like maybe even more than double where it was so having the card will, will make your life so much easier it's not hard to get um so that's not that's not too much of an issue but once you have that everything is easy so studying but the main thing is the main thing is to study like you can if someone wants to come here to, to do Talib al Ain, they can really go far. Like I came here with no Arabic, nothing on this kind of alhamdulillah I can speak, I've reached the fluency here. And it's it's amazing. It's such a short time as well. In terms of the Fusha, the classical Arabic, they don't speak the Fusha here. Um you can't read in most Arab countries they don't speak the Fusha, they speak the streets, they will speak the dialect. Here their dialect is called Hasiriya. And um 
I don't speak Hassanier, but you know, if you know first how you can kind of put some things together and you can get what they say, and you learn some words from living amongst them, it's not too difficult. And um, so yeah, if, you, if someone wants to learn first how, they, they're thinking, how can I learn first how? The classical Arabic, but they don't speak it. Yet. But if you speak it to them, they will speak it back to you. You know, for the most part, some of them. There are a lot of foreigners here that don't speak Arabic at all. It's a French colony country. So you'll hear a lot of French. Um, however, the first half, if you speak to the native speakers, the, the native uh, the native Mauritanians, they, they will understand the first half. They may reply to you in, in the dialect, but if you can speak first half, you can you can hold the conversation, you can go, you can go a little bit. Or well, some of them speak very good uh, first half anyway. So you'll be fine. You you'll be fine. You get you get through, I'm getting through, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Uh, what else? I get a lot of questions on me. Um, like if if, they, if I have a family, um, how much is it for a house and stuff like that? Houses are res relatively cheap, especially if you're coming from from a Western country. It's not it's not it's not expensive, man. You know, houses are nice. Um, if it's, especially if you're coming from the West, man. You know, the standard that the standard we have here, or the standard from the West. Um, things are generally more expensive but when you come here you'll be paying you could pay like maybe 300 300 pounds more for a nice nice house nice house with like a living room bathroom and everything kitchen is very very nice you know and, uh, the AC in the city in the village you can get your, you can get your an even bigger house and I think it may even be a little bit it's more expensive it depends if you want to buy or rent right but in general, it's not it's not that expensive. You can come here with your family. You can survive for for some years with your family. You know, I've, I know people that are in the village with their family right now. They came from the west, like Germany and stuff like that. And they've got a house and they're doing well. So, so it's not it's not too difficult for housing. In terms of in terms of the safety of the country, the safety. Especially as a foreigner, you have to be careful. It is safe, generally speaking. As a foreigner, you have to be extremely careful. Um, you're targeting some areas. You know, like they're, they're targeting you specifically, but if they see that you have something nice and it's, it's late, it's night time, you may, something, you may be, you may be in a, a risk. You feel like that. But generally speaking, you should be fine in, in most areas of the country. You should be fine. However, in general, generally speaking, in the dunya, you're not safe 100%. Sorry for the noise, but it's it's okay. It's, it's it's decent. I'm not gonna say it's safe completely, but it's decent. It's okay. You'll be right here with your family. You can walk around. You can have your phone. And you can you know you can wear nice clothes. You you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Generally speaking, you'll be fine. There's just certain areas at certain times. Just avoid it. And, you know, avoid uh, being by yourself maybe in certain areas, but you'll be fine. Most people when they when they even live in those bad areas anyway, especially as a foreigner coming from the west, you probably won't live in those bad areas anyway. You will live in a nice area. So it will be fine. Um there are there are a lot of donkeys though. I'm gonna show you this right now. It's gonna it's gonna pass. I don't wanna point the camera directly at him you know? but there are a lot of donkeys. Old school vibes, old school I'm just sitting on the side of the road right now. And uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a good country, it's good vibes, man. It's peaceful, it's good. Um, that's that's one of the things that makes me like this country, the peace and the, the sakina you get. You don't feel it in the West. And you can wear anything you want, man. Like you can just wear anything you want. Pe you know what I mean? People don't care. You know, sometimes the imam will come, he's really dope, he's ripped, he's the, the sheikh of the, of the, of the, of the masjid and he's, his own thobe is ripped. He, no one cares, no one's like, judging him or nothing like that it's, it's not really a big deal you know people don't care for uh, name branded stuff it's just a simple simple way of living simple life you know what i mean traditional way of living there's no there's no crazy stuff man going on you know people just people just living their life and normally just getting along minding their own business i'm going to show what like a, a shop looks like trying to very discreet. Also, solid. Yeah, man, it's kind of it's awkward. So I stopped recording basically because it was just too 
it's too awkward, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Yeah, it's awkward, man. Very awkward trying to, trying to record in this country. You know, people don't like it. Generally speaking, so you have to you have to be careful. I think I know this guy as well that's coming on this. But anyway, man. Yeah, basically, I'll just stop recording due to the sheer awkwardness. But a lot of, another question I always get as well is, um, how do you get here in the first place? How do you come to Mauritania? If you don't know anybody, you don't know, you don't know the process, who's going to receive you and stuff like that. Um, you can, the, thing, the thing what I did is, but I, I, my father knew someone, so I had a connection. But most people don't, so I recommend you come and like, just pick a hotel and, and stay in a hotel until you find, and maybe do research on where you want to, where you want to study. So then when you get here, you just go straight to the place where you want to study and you can just get straight in there like you can stay in the hotel and then go straight to the place where you want to study and then you can just you can just do it like that in terms of visa and stuff like that you normally pay uh, if you're a foreigner coming out like from another if you're coming from a country that's not an african country yeah you, you have to pay, they charge more so for me i got charged 60 dollars if it's a country within africa it's like 40 dollars or 30 dollars for the visa and the visa is like a few months and then you can get the Yakama, the card that i was talking about earlier um, so that's the process. It's, it's relatively easy. However, when I came in, I told them I was studying, so they, they needed proof. They needed like evidence that I was actually here to study because they're looking at my passport. I'm a Western guy. What are you? Are you really here to study? They were, they were a bit suspicious of me, I think. So they never said they were suspicious. Obviously, they're not going to say that, but they were suspicious. So if you do want to, if you are coming to study, um, I'm not going to say lie or nothing like that, but. That's I'm just saying when this happened to me. I told him I came here to study and they held me in the airport for like 10 hours. And each year I slept in the airport and the chef that I was studying with sorry. The chef that I was studying with had to come all the way to the airport just to show them that yeah he's with me. And then they let me then, then they let me into the country. So that's why I experienced some people most people don't experience that, that's why I went through that. So cost of living. Cost of living it's relatively cheap compared to the West. It's very cheap actually. Yeah, like you can get a taxi to for to most places for like 25p to 50p, depending on, on the distance. But it's, it's very cheap. I'm not like living here. Is, you can you can get a lot done for for less. Like the because I was from the UK, right? I'm, I was living in the UK, so your pound your pound can stretch a lot further here in terms of housing, food. Even getting a car, things are a lot cheaper. Even surprisingly, and again, an iPhone is actually was actually cheaper as well, which is, which is funny. Um, and it's real from the US and everything. Crazy. Um, so the cost of living here is not bad. I would say definitely. Obviously, it's a quote unquote third world country, right? So the money is gonna is gonna stretch regardless. The pound is, is still quite strong. So the dollar or wherever, wherever country you're from from the west it's, it's still your money will stretch you know and there's a lot more western students and western people in general coming here from like the other french countries and stuff like that or from like denmark and all that and they're all coming here to study so you know you can survive you can you can do your, you can do your thing here for for a little bit like you don't have to be rich or nothing like that you can survive here for for a long time or, or a little you can just get by good but yeah forgive me forgive me if this video is a bit all over the place but uh, i was just getting i was getting a lot of these questions from people that want to come study or come make hijra so i thought i'd just make a video quickly just answering these questions uh, do let me know if uh, if you have any more things you would like to know any more inquiries let me know in the comments and i'll get back to you inshallah and um yeah i'm gonna try and be more consistent as well it is ramadan right now so we'll see but I'm going to be more consistent definitely in the future, so stay tuned. We'll see you soon, inshallah. Asalaamu Alaikum.